Amen. Thank you, Noah. Isn't it so great to have Noah back in church? You may see him from time to time. He is the full-time pianist for Peace United Methodist Church, but specifically during the fall, winter, and spring when we're at 1015, he is now on our, our list of uh, backups if we need him. Come summer, we're at the same time worshiping. So, But he does help out. He plays at the nursing home uh, for all of us when we preach on Sunday, and that is absolutely fabulous because, as most of you know, I don't sing, so it's not like I can really help help that singing going on during that time. So I want to welcome you to worship. This is a time when we can gather together to praise God, to sing, to pray, to learn, to celebrate all the things that are going on in our lives. I want to welcome all of you that are here in person. I want to welcome those of you that are joining us online uh, screen to screen as we continue to explore what it means to be God's witnesses in this time and in this place where God has put us and God has moved us and God is speaking to us. So this morning as we prepare our hearts for worship, let us join together in singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. It's number 139 for those of you that like the hymnal and we'll be doing verses 1, 3, and 5. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. After hearing Christ's call for the first time, we need to carry on that conversation. It's not a one and done. The good news is that Christ doesn't tap us on the shoulder and then leave us alone to figure it out. Our living Savior is a constant presence, guiding, advising, and strengthening us for the journey into discipleship. Christ is risen. Worship his holy name. As we come to our time of praise, um, Ann and I have been joking that this is the, the Hind Trio Plus Two. Um, but I do want to let you know what the first song we're going to do, uh, Daddy Sang Bass, really is a testimony about the fact that it is a witness to the idea that the person is singing and they will join their family once again in that place at heaven 
a place where they can all sing together once more. So they are witnessing through song. So join in. I remember when I was a lad, times were hard and things were bad, but there's a silver lining behind every cloud. Just poor people, that's all we were, trying to make a living out of black land dirt, but get together in a family circle, singing loud. Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother joined right in there. To help a troubled soul. One of these days it won't be long. I'll rejoin them in a song. Gonna join the family circle at the throne. Now I remember after work, Mama was calling all of us. You could hear us singing for a country mile. Now little brother has. Together again up yonder in a little while. Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor, me and little brother joined right in there. Singing seems to help a troubled soul. One of these days it won't be long, I'll rejoin him in a song. Gonna join the family circle at the throne. No, the sir. The second song, one of the things, uh, Ann and I talked about this song a little bit yesterday as we were uh, thinking about it and preparing for this, but truly this is a witness song. In fact, it's a, a hint back to the very first witness when the thief was sitting, hanging on the cross next to Jesus and said, do, Lord, do remember me. So this is a way for us to remember that first witness on that day when Christ sacrificed himself for us as that thief testified in front of all those people. It's a way for us to sing about it and share in that glory. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines I got a home in glory land that outshines the sun way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me.
didn't realize I had my microphone on. I'm so glad I didn't start singing along with you, all of you. As we come to our time of joys and concerns this morning, that uh, uh, it, is, it is a good day. It is a good day to celebrate Christ's life, to celebrate Christ's sacrifice for us, as well as all that that is going on uh, within our church as we continue to lift them up. I mean, it is great to have Martha McAllister back here with us as she continues to recover from her surgery. Uh, we want to continue to keep in our prayers uh, the Durant Volunteer to Fire Department as, as uh, they continue to put themselves back together again and as uh, we continue to pray for Matt and his recovery. I would ask that you continue to pray for uh, our church and its ministries as we continue to move through this summer. We're going to be doing some new stuff and trying some new things, so I need you to be praying for the youth, the young adults, the children, the volunteers, as we look at what church post-pandemic looks like when it comes to Sunday school and discipleship making. We're going to be trying some new ministries on Wednesday night, trying some new stuff. Today was Sunday, Sunday, and we, we served up the little ones all kinds of ice cream and got them all hyped up, and, and they're all here. So if they start getting a little jittery back there, just pray on them, and uh, it's all good. We also want to continue to keep uh, Jean Scott in our prayers. Uh, I've not had any updates from Bob as to uh, uh, how she's doing, but we want to continue to keep her in our prayers. Um, Jared Lang, as we continue to keep him in our prayers. I have not heard anything from uh, uh, Joy as to how that's going, but I know that continues to, to move on. I did see on Facebook, we've been praying for Russ Steffens, and he is home, right? Okay. So he's, he's halfway home, but it's all good. so far it's all good signs moving towards getting back home. So there is an answer to prayer and a way for that we can continue to uh, lift that up. Uh, Kim Pestel, as she continues her treatment. Um, Connie, as she continues to deal with her pancreatitis. We had a little joke about it because I said she was too late for ice cream, and she goes, couldn't have it anyway. So that's so sad. But, yeah, we want to continue to keep Connie in our prayers as that uh, continues to develop and move along. Um, Joy Carter's Uncle Larry, as his continues to wait, uh, continue to keep prayers for Sarah Anderson's father-in-law, Mike, as he continues his cancer uh, treatment. Uh, Dale, is doing good still? All right. Is good enough to remove him yet, or you want to keep praying? Okay. So don't stop praying for him, but I will stop listing him, okay? So that's, um, keep praying for each other all the time. I want to continue to keep uh, uh, Crystal in our prayers. She's now okay. And is it her father that is Dallas? Okay, I wasn't, your family's large enough. I wasn't sure I had all the right connections. But continue to pray for Dallas, though, as he continues his uh, lung cancer. Uh, Ed, keep Ed McAllister and Rosemary in our prayers as they uh, continue their uh, battle with health issues and changes. Continue to keep uh, Ann and her family, her brother and uh, sister-in-law, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, in your prayers as they deal with their surgeries and the cancer treatments. Of course, continue Carolyn Tharp and Diane Budding and Marcia Hetzler in our prayers as they continue their uh, treatments and processes, as well as continue to pray for those in the Ukraine. Uh, you know, we, it seems like we get one good news and then we get five bad news, but uh, keep praying for those that are uh, dealing with all of that. And part of me, I'm, I'm not even sure how you could sleep uh, during that, knowing that the minute your eyes close, uh, the rumble that's going on outside could be heading your way. And, of course, we want to continue to keep praying for um, COVID and all that because it's still present in our community. It's still doing its uh, damage. And so, like I've said, keep washing your hands and, and doing what you need to do to care for yourselves. Uh, we want to continue to pray for our homebound and our those that are in the care center. We did get an update on Chad Morgan last night that uh, uh, it was another up and down week, but... He is back at Winning Wheels, but they're still dealing with dialysis and a few other things. And uh, uh, so Lynette asked for continued prayers that he uh, find the right solution to transportation and all that is going on in his life. Uh, are there any, first of all, is there any on, none online? Is there any prayer concerns or joys that we need to lift up besides graduation, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes? Everybody's good. All right, then let us take this time to join together in our unison prayer as we prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls to be in communion with God. Let us pray. 
O living Christ, forgive us for the sins we have committed against you in thought, word, and deed. We pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. We pray for open hearts and minds that will respond to all that you reveal to us. Reveal to us, your majesty. Teach your hearts to follow you. Bestow on us the courage needed to be your witnesses in our homes and in our communities. Make us one in love and one in mission. Amen. We're going to head into a time of pastoral prayer, silent prayer, and then finish with the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Lord, this morning, the sun is bright, the wind is crisp, and we, your people, have gathered here to be in your presence. So pour out your Holy Spirit upon us during this time of celebrating, this time of worshiping, this time of bringing our concerns and our joys our issues, our troubles before you. Lord, you've heard the, the list of concerns that surround this community, that you may continue to work in the lives of those that are recovering, those that are preparing for surgery, those that are recovering from rehab, those that are dealing with the age of COVID and accidents, falls and mishaps. Lord, we ask that you be with those who sit diligently by watching, holding the hands and being with those that they love. But Lord, it is hard. It's hard for us to always give it over to you. But we ask, Lord, that you wrap your arms around us, around the families that we care about, the loved ones we're praying for, that you may give them the peace, the understanding that you may touch their hearts, their minds, and their souls, to let them know that you're still with them, that they're not doing this alone. Be with the doctors and the nurses to give them strength, the caregivers, the paramedics, the firemen, the police. Help them to protect and to serve in ways that bring glory to you. Lord, this morning we ask that you envelop this world with your love and your peace, that those who wish to do harm may be stopped. Those who are planning evil have a change of heart. Those who are standing in harm's way that you put up a shield of protection so that they may do their jobs and testify to your love. Be with our, our seminaries and our teaching institutions as they all get ready, our high schools and colleges, as they prepare for graduation to send out our young ones. Lord, I specifically ask that you be with those from this church those that we honor and mention, that they, as they go from this place, that they may remember their lessons, they remember their times, and that they can know that they are always welcomed back. So, Lord, this morning, we just ask that you sit with us and prepare us so that we may be your witnesses, that we may be your examples of love and compassion to those that are homeless, to those that are dealing with inadequate housing and income, those that are unable to get medical treatment or are dealing with addictions and abuse. Lord, help us to be your instruments of love and care. So Lord, we come to you now in a time of silence that you may sit with us, speak to us, move our hearts, cleanse our souls and prepare our minds to be your disciples. So Lord, come, be with us now. Lord, thank you. Thank you for being here in this, your house, as we sit and prepare. Thank you for being with those who have joined us online, that your reach goes beyond our imagination. 
continue to walk with us and prepare us as we praise your name with that prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The good news. God is working in this place. God is working in your home. God is moving to prepare you for the kingdom that is yet to come. That as we witness and as we testify with our lives, with our words, with our love, that God has worked through us already. So as we continue to prepare ourselves and to praise God, let us now reflect with the hymn, Open Our Eyes. It's number 2086 in the little black book, and we'll be singing this twice. forward. Come on up here. Have a seat. And I'm going to ask Dylan and Anna to come forward. I'm not going to make you sit on the full step. You get to sit on the table. You guys, no, you guys, you guys are on the staff. You are on the staff. You can tell they've had ice cream. They're a little lethargic. So I won't make you sit on the full step. You can sit in the pew. So do you guys know who these uh, people, these two are? No clue? Didn't, didn't I just say their names? Yeah, Anna and Dylan, very good. You at least remember that. So Anna and Dylan are graduating seniors. Later today, they got it done. They can probably remember, in fact, I'm pretty sure I can pull up pictures of Dylan for sure, of him sitting there just like you. Hard to believe, huh? Not really? I think it's a little hard for Dylan to believe that. It's hard to believe that Dylan was ever as short as you guys were. 
I know your sister is this cousin aunt. Cousin, okay. It's like, hmm. Yeah, I know she's graduating also. But one of the things I want to let you know is they were also part of this church for quite a while, and they have been very big part of this church. You know, have you guys ever been in the handicapped bathroom? That's the big bathroom, the family bathroom. Did you see a bench on the wall, a wooden bench? If you haven't, you need to look at it. Dylan made that. It was part of his 4-H project, and he won a blue ribbon for it, and he did that for the church. Anna, sometimes you, the main reason you probably maybe have seen her, a lot of times she's sitting right where Noah's sitting, and she plays the piano. But she's also in the process of painting a great big mural in the high school room of a moonrise, did you call it that? Sunset, moonrise, something. Poofy clouds, yeah. And uh, so she's left her mark on the church. And part of what I want you to know is that God is going to be having you make your mark on this church too. Coming up this summer, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity, like I've given them the opportunity, to start making your marks in the church. We're going to do some projects so that you can claim this church as your own way before even confirmation shows up. Isn't that cool? Because I've been doing that. I truly believe that every church should be marked by its members, by what they do. The trees that we plant, the things that we paint, the banners that we hang, all that kind of stuff. And so I've been doing that for 30 years with, with children and youth, and we're going to keep doing that this summer. And their example... Isn't that cool? So at the or you guys get your suckers, I'm going to give you to stand up behind them as, as the as leaving. I don't want to, you're graduating high school, you're leaving there, but you are still members of this church. And so um, in recognition of this church, make sure I grab all the right ones here, um, it's, a, it's a little different and unique, and I don't want it just looks like we've offset it a little bit, but uh, Anna, we want to, in recognition of you as a senior, there is a prayer shawl in there. Because, because you didn't go through confirmation, you went through membership with me, you didn't get a prayer shawl. Dylan went through confirmation with Mike, right? Or with, was it with Mike or was it with Tom? All right. Before me. Be, you know, I won't give you. Um, uh, before Steve. But anyway, um, and so the UMW, and you've got one in yours, has a little gift for you. But I also want to let you know, not only did they put their mark here, but this church, through the, uh, the gracious, I'm going to mispronounce it, Westine? West Stein. See, I knew without a written in front, they both received a scholarship so that they can continue going to college. Isn't that cool? So Anna, Anna's going to the University of Iowa, and what are you going to study? Yeah. She's going to, yeah. Brains and piano, basically. <laughs> Neuroscience and performance piano, is that what you said? Okay. And Dylan, you're, where are you go you're going to? Software engineering, which, duh. I mean, part of me is like, being the robot, you've done it, so forth. So he's going to become a, he's going to fix, the, he's going to take Lance's place and help us fix all the stuff here in the church, and Anna's going to keep providing music and then figure out what's wrong with my head, right? So we want to thank you for all that you've done for the church. We, we celebrate with you, and we can't wait to see all the great things that are going to happen. So we're all going to pray together now, okay? You guys ready? Dear Jesus, thank you for Dylan. Thank you for Anna. And help us to make our mark on your church because we love you, and you love us, and we know there's nothing we can do about it. Amen. All right. Sucker and head back. Oops. Okay, you guys, our photographer wants the picture. Get back up there. Stand right, right in front of Dylan and Anna. Yes. Oh, they're doing that. You guys show them some love. Okay. Yep, I will. Boys, you got to come over. Come on, Mauer boys. I know you're shy, but that's okay. Wait a minute. 
You know, when, when I stand, when this is, let me go over here, okay? Uh-huh. At least Anna has some heels, but that's not much. So today, as we continue to look at the idea of witnessing, the idea of being able to testify to what God is doing, we take a different look at what is going on post-church formation. Shortly after, while the church is being formed, while the disciples are going out as missionaries and as witnesses to what is happening, we hear a story that involves the Holy Spirit, the movement of God, and how, and I'm hoping to help that you to see how that can affect you in your days and weeks to come. So reading from Acts of the Disciples, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15, we hear this part of the church history. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, but convinced that God had called us to proclaim good news to them. We set sail from Taurus and took a straight course to the Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some time, for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat, we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Cyrita and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her, bapti- and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the message that God has placed upon me by singing together, He leadeth me, O blessed thought. It's number 128 in your hymnal, and we'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 3.
Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon me and upon this time that we gather to explore your word, to explore your direction for us as a church, as disciples, as those who have claimed the name of Christian. Help us to explore what it means to live in this time and in this place. So, Lord, come, be with us now. Amen. So this portion of Scripture, this portion where Paul is getting ready to figure out what is next, we hear about the fact that he gets a vision. He has a dream. He's being told by God that there is a possibility to go someplace else. One of the things that prior, prior to this, as you read it, we find out that they have been instructed by the Holy Spirit, by God, not to travel and preach the, the good news of Jesus Christ in Asia. They've been told to be quiet while they travel. And they finally get this sign, this vision, this dream, this insight that they are to go to the land of Macedonia. And so they figure out the way to get there. There is no direct route. In fact, it says that God for, kept them from going on a direct route. So they plan this hop, skip, and jump until they get to the city of Philippi, which you would all know by reading the book of Philippians is when we hear from those, it's a letter to those churches that they're establishing at that time. And so they get this vision that there are people that are craving for them to come and be a part of their community, that there are apparently people there that need their guidance to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And so they take off on this out-of-the-way way of getting there until they get to the city of Philippi. And it says that while they're there for several days, they're just waiting until it becomes the Sabbath, until it becomes Saturday, for they are still good and faithful Jewish people. And they seek out a place to pray. Now, in looking at what that means for a place to pray, it says they go outside the city gates and they go down by the river. Not every city, especially outside of Jerusalem and as you got farther away from the, the Holy Land, had synagogues. Synagogues were part of during the uh, exile and after the temple had been destroyed. Synagogues were built as a place where groups of Jewish people could meet and carry on the tradition that normally would have been carried on in the temple. It was a way of having a mini temple, so to speak, in their own midst, so that they could pray, they could study their scriptures, they could gather for wisdom. And so they were seeking that out. They left the city gates, which means to some observers that there probably wasn't one inside the city of Philippi. It was a Roman colony. It probably had plenty of pagan temples, plenty of places where you could probably get anything you wanted. Your heart's desire could be fulfilled in any of those places of worship, those pagan worship. So they went out down by the river. That could have been another song we sang, couldn't it? Down by the river. It does. To find a place where that they could pray. And as they got there, it says that they found a group of women. Now, it doesn't say what they're doing. It doesn't say that they're worshiping. It doesn't say whether they're doing laundry or preparing to cook. They just come across some women, and it's a place where they are feeling, I'm guessing, the presence of God. And they stop, and they pray, and they talk. And what happens? One in the midst of these women, a young woman by the name, or an old woman by the name of Lydia, we're not quite sure what age she was, but the, by uh, historically by the fact that they said the city that she came from, the one that I, I stumbled over more than the others, means that she probably was 
a freed slave from that city. And she was there doing the, the, the business that she had learned as a slave. And that was, she was a vendor of purple cloth. Now at first reading, especially in today's modern uh, setting, if we try to say, well, that, that means she ran a quilt shop, right? If, you want, if you're trying to offset the two. And it's like, no, it's more like she ran the gold exchange. That's how wealthy she would have been. Purple cloth was one of the most valuable items in that region. It was only to be worn by the highest echelon of the Roman Empire and of the priests in the temple. It cost so much that nobody else had purple cloth. Another little tidbit to throw in there, the process of making purple cloth, as I remember and it was explained to me a long time ago in, in seminary, is one that probably would have kept her on the unclean side of the Jewish faith. It involved some creature, and I can't tell you now off the top of my head, and you had to like smush it and take a certain part of its organs out, and then it created the purple dye that you, and you had to do this a lot. I mean, like, like an oyster or a mussel or something, and you pulled the squeeze and purple stuff came out. I, Google it when you get home if you really want to know the process. But because it was a messy internal process in the Jewish community or Jewish followers of, of Judaism, she would have been on the fringe a lot of the time because she would have had gone through cleansing rituals if that was the way she was leaning towards. But it did tell us that she was a believer in God, which means that she was believing in what we would call God, Jesus, Jewish faith would have been Yahweh, would have been the person of a similarity that when Paul started to speak, she was interested. And we hear the fact that because she was listening to them and they were praying and speaking, it's a similar sight to very much of what John Wesley went through. Her heart was moved. John Wesley talked about his heart was strangely warm. Some of us feel the Holy Spirit with goosebumps or with um, a certain sensation or uh, a certain feeling of euphoria or whatever it is that God's presence in your life. She was experiencing it at that moment while Paul and the others were praying and preaching, so much so that she basically said, baptize me. Baptize my entire family, all of my household." For we want to follow Jesus. And because of that, you are welcome in my home. We go and find out that historically Lydia is considered one of the, the sponsors of Christianity in the early church. That because of who she was and where she was located in the city of Philippi and with the, uh, the church that was founded there, she became an important disciple, important, an important first person in the church. And it was because God touched her heart. And as in our opening call to worship, as my wordsmith wife so elegantly put it in there, it's not a one and done thing. When God moves your heart, God's not done. It isn't, oh, you're a Christian, so now you're a Christian, and now you don't have to worry about anything else. No, now you're a Christian, and there is more yet to do. For God will continue to touch your heart. God will continue to show you where to go. For Paul, it was outside the city gates, down by the river, around some women that were down there doing something, and they decided that was the place to pray and to talk, and to praise God. And because of that, because of their witness in that place and at that time, others were converted, others were baptized. The churches were beginning to be formed. And so God is asking us, as modern-day Christians, that when we find a desire to pray, we find a place where the Spirit seems to be moving with us, 
and we pray. And I'm going to tell you, don't do it. Don't, you don't have to do it silently. Pray out loud. What's the person next to you going to do? I guarantee you, you're not going to be persecuted like they used to be. They may get up and move away. They may listen closely. They may ask you some questions. And you know what the best answer to a question you don't know is? I don't know. I'll find out and let you know. It's one of my best answers in confirmation class. I don't know. I'll look it up, let you know. People have a curiosity about why it is that we gather on Sunday morning when there's so much else to do. Why we take time to support our mission and ministry. Why we do the activities that we do. Let them ask the questions. Give them the answers because God has touched my heart and is not done touching my heart so I continue to work to be what God needs here and now. So this next week, when you get an opportunity to share with somebody what it is that God has called you to be doing, whether that's planting a tree, painting a, a mural, putting in a bathroom bench, mowing the grass, washing windows. Share with them. You didn't do it because Pastor Steve forced me to. I wish I had that power. I wouldn't need volunteers anymore. You did it because Jesus helped you know that to show your love of Christ, you show your love to the community. So let us pray. Lord, I just ask that you help us to live into Paul's actual words, into Lydia's question. Help us to be available when a Lydia shows up in our lives so that we can either give the answers or get the answers for them. So Lord, today, be with us as we go about our celebrations and our times together throughout this week and the days ahead that we may continue to love you in ways that bring glory to your name. Amen. As we come to our uh, time of offering, uh, as we've discovered, the easiest way is the offering place or at the back. If you have a gift to drop off, you can leave it there. Those of you that are online, you can mail it into Post Office Box 57, uh, Wilton, Iowa, or you can go online to umcofwilton.org and click on the online giving and give through Vanco using uh, your banking institution. But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you for su constantly supporting this church as we continue to prepare for a full remodel of our sanctuary, as we prepare to do the mission and ministry out into our community. You have been good and loyal and faithful followers of Christ in the supporting of God's ministry here on this experimental plot of heaven, these four acres of heaven that God has placed us on. But because of that, let us take this time to dedicate, to lift and to praise God for the gifts that have come in, the gifts that are coming in, and the miracles that will happen and with the gifts that are yet to even be thought of. So let us pray. O oh, living Christ, we are witnesses to your amazing deeds. We are grateful for your gifts of forgiveness and a new start. With open hearts and minds, we are resolved to listen and respond to your spirit. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to you. May they be a testimony to your glory. Amen. As we come to our time of announcements, um, as usual, the week this week, the sewing group will be meeting on Tuesday from 9 to noon. There's always jobs, uh, cutting, sewing, you name it. They'll find something for you to do while you're here. Uh, as far as I know, Praise Band will be rehearsing on Wednesday night at 6.30. If not, Laura will be getting a hold of those of you that are in Praise Band to let you know that. Uh, the Church Executive Council meets tomorrow night at 7 uh, to continue to, to, re to review what has happened in the church and what, where we're going. Uh, there will be an option for Zoom if you cannot make it, and their agenda and, and minutes will be coming out in the email uh, tomorrow. Next week, I am yet still trying to burn up my vacation before I lose it. Uh, it's always this time of year, you know, I have to get get it all in one way or another. So I will be gone Wednesday through Sunday um, to, uh, to use up one Sunday and a couple other days and to uh, 
celebrate Anne's birthday. Since I won't be here to bring it up in the joys and concerns next week, uh, I will not tell you how old she is, but uh, well, that's the other reason, because I, I wasn't exactly sure. I just knew she's older than I am. But, Anne, but because of that, though, Anne will still be covering uh, the cell phone and any phone calls uh, that are needed during that, um, that section. I do want to let you know that on Memorial Day, I have been asked to give the invocation for that Memorial Day service, and that is that uh, the service is at 9.30 at Oakdale Cemetery. And, uh, of course, everyone's invited. Anna is part of that um, service also as a girl state representative. She's going to tell us about TAPS, I think. That, isn't that we, something like that? And uh, the parade is at 9 o'clock, meeting at City Hall and on out there. And then there's a lunch to follow at the Legion following that. If it rains, it's at the high school, starts at 9.30, that's it. Um, no parade. Are there any other announcements for this week? I do know, yes, I was going to say, Missions has some. Do you want me to just try to say it or do you want to try to say it from there? Yeah, go ahead and shout because no, none of that's turned on, Terry. For those of you that are online, recap, and those if you couldn't hear, 27th of June, we're taking a trip to Bidwell Riverside, help out in the food pantry, um, help out with restocking. If you'd like to contribute items, there is a list and a tub out in the front foyer here where you can drop off toilet paper, shampoo, all that kind of stuff. There's a sign-up sheet in the back if you'd like to come, so that way we can keep you in the loop as to who's going and what time um, and all that kind of good stuff. And the good news is if you got the online uh, weekly newsletter, uh, there is a link that you can click that will take you to Bidwell Riverside and show you all the fun stuff that they do there and, and the way that they support uh, their community. Uh, I would like to let you know that uh, those of you, if you're interested, there is an itinerary in the back for my trip to the Holy Lands uh, next December 28th through January 8th. Uh, if you want to look that over and see if that's something that might interest you, uh, feel free to ask me any questions. We have not set up the first gathering to see who's interested yet, but that will be coming. Also at the back is the next two calendar as well as the prayer list for anybody that is interested in, in picking that up as we move forward. I also would like to let you know that come January 1st, there's going to be much more in the announcements next week and some stuff coming out of, in, the, in the email blast and so forth. On Wednesday nights, we're going to have family fun night, and it will be from 5.30 to 7. And I've already had a few of the younger ones say, well, I have games that night. Well, we're doing it all summer long. So if you can't make it at the beginning, you'll be able to make it at the end. We're going to do, we're going to let them make their marks on the walls. We're going to let them do all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to feed them good food like mac and cheese and hot dogs and walking tacos. And, and it's open to the whole family. So as long, you can't just come and eat, though. If you come and eat, you've got to help participate in all the other stuff, too. So, but you're all welcome. And uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a fun time of learning and uh, sharing and uh, being a church body. 
So is there any other? Dylan. Really? The big red barn as you point out that yeah, that direction. So you heard all that on the internet? Big party. <laughs> no, just <laughs> Yes. Uh, I am looking forward to it. So are there any other announcements? Thank you, Dylan. Graduations at two. Is it online too? Okay. For some of those of us that may not even be out of the church yet, so that's why. All right. With that, let us take this time to uh, our responsive benediction. Be witnesses of Christ's love. Seek to open your hearts and minds to Christ every day of your lives. Christ is sending you into a hurting world. Go forth with the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit until we meet again, and all God's people said, Amen. let us close today with our going, our last song, Forward Through the Ages. It's number 555 in your hymnal. And Joy wanted me to re re let you know, you all know the tune, because it's to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. No. <laughs> Onward Christian Soldiers. I knew it was one of those older ones. Onward Christian Soldiers. So you all know the tune. You're just going to throw some, yeah, throw one Noah way off. He's like, Whoa. Onward Christian soldiers, soldiers instead of, and then forward through the ages. So words are a little different, but you know the tune.